But if you notice that your board doesn't power up at all, this is the first culprit. Because if your board does not power up at all, this cable is the issue per se. So don't even bother looking at all. If there's no power coming from here, now this YD DY board and this YD board, they may look similar, but they don't always all share the same component. So if your machine says a DY here, but they now brought a new board to you and it says a KC here. The, one of the first challenges you're going to have is with your A tools. All right, guys, welcome to another video. And in this video, I want to show you the XD600 carriage board. And um, of course, to answer a couple of questions, how do I know if my carriage board is dead? How do I know if my carriage board is still working fine and stuff like that? So in this video, we'll attempt to cover some of those uh, issues. But before we go, I want you to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on the notification bell. And uh, don't forget, we sell X600 equipment. We sell large format machines. We sell uh, carriage boards. We sell driver boards. We sell printer heads. We sell monogram machines. We sell cotton plotters and all of those things. So you can support our channel by buying from us it will go a long way in helping us so now let's go straight to it uh, this is a carriage board that is installed on the machine right now uh, as you can see this board is on right now right you can see some blinking lights on this side you can see some lights at the back there of the printer head you can also see some lights on these sides now all of these lights are activation lights that show you uh, a couple of things that you have to pay attention to uh, this is more like the standby light so it shows you that the machine is standby and it's about to receive print now once in a while you can have these lights come on but your machine may also not be printing so these lights are not the overall indicator that your board is working fine but then uh if anything at all your board should have these sets of lights that's one light under there you should have two lights here you should have these two lights as well these two lights as well and then you should have these alternating lights it's usually fluctuating between those numbers there right so you should have those lights very important and then there should be that other light those two other lights there and there's three other lights at the back there if you look at it there are three lights here every light that is designated hv is a high voltage light which means it's coming from your 42 volts power board uh so you have to keep that in mind if you one of the ways to know if your board is fine is that all of these lights should be on but of course like i said it's not an overall indicator that your board is fine so that's uh, step number one step number two is well these cables what do they really mean and what do they do because at times you just have these boards and you don't know exactly what these boards and these things do all right, so the first one here is the printer head cable and it's usually connected via an adapter card. Let me show you a sample of that adapter card. So this is that adapter card now uh, on a board that is not connected. These adapter cards are the cards that take these cables, take data from this board and then sends it to the printer head via this adapter card, right? So these adapter card now are extremely important because without them, you cannot connect your printer head successfully. So this is what the slot looks like without that adapter card. So this adapter card now is expecting you to, you know, send your data from this board through this cable to the printer head, right? So without this adapter card now, you actually cannot effectively connect your printer head to this board. So that's very, very vital. So this adapter card is like the bridge between the cable, the printer head and the board, right? 
So that is vitally important, very, very important. And you need to keep that in mind. So uh, that's the first thing. So this cable, for instance, is the printer head cable. So when we say printer head cable, this is the printer head cable we're always referencing. And that printer head cable connects to the board via this adapter card, which is here, right? Connected and a sample of it is right here. By the way, I sell all of these parts as well. All right. So that's going on. Uh, you need to be sure that your machine has this adapter card. So let's say, for instance, your printer head has a problem. Uh, you want to check the cable, whether the cable has a problem. And uh, also you want to maybe suspect whether this chip is working. But I can assure you this chip scarcely has a problem. It never really has a problem so but once in a while it just gets damaged so you, you want to look for splurges of ink all around the chip so if you don't have any splurge of ink you can look at it front and back if you don't have any of those symptoms around that cable then you really may not be looking at a chip problem all right next to that we have this black cable right so this black cable is you can see that it runs across the length of the belt and if we trace it downwards you see that those same cables i don't know if i can show you from here uh those that's the cable down there that's the cable down there right so it runs across the length of the machine like that and comes all the way down and goes into this place and i'll show you that driver board in the next video so this cable is the network cable so uh, there are two network cables on your large format machine you have the normal RJ45 cable let me show you what that looks like so these are the two cables I'm talking about this uh, one is the Ethernet cable which connects the network from your laptop right uh, connects that cable from your laptop to the driver board this is a sample of the driver board i'm going to do a part two of this video and it's going to be showcasing this driver board and all the parts that you need to you know remember on this driver board but you see this cable right goes into the port of the driver board like so goes here so that's the first cable but the second cable this particular cable that i was talking about this particular cable that i was talking about is this one these are brand new cables for instance that i sell uh so this is that cable so by the time this cable is done taking data from your computer right through the adapter port there by the time it's done taking this data that is the image data from your screen and it's done taking it into this driver board uh this cable now takes that data and sends it to this board which is this particular board right here right so that's pretty much what that cable does so this is a network cable so that's that about this cable it's your network cable it is a 100 megabyte data transmitting cable so which means it takes data from 100 megabytes up there's another cable that takes, you know, a lot higher than that. But when we get to the driver board, I'll show you that cable now. So that's that for that. So this is your network cable and it goes into that port. If you have a board that is not fixed, this is the port where you put the cable, this port right here. So that's where you put that cable. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the port where you put the cable, that port right there, this one here this one here so, all right so next to that we then have the station sensor cable so this station sensor cable is the one that passes sensor data through this film via this sensor there i don't know if you can see that sensor this one right here right so that sensor now is the one that reads the data of this film and then it helps the machine to know where it is uh on the x axis so if, if it is the, at this point so when you say you, your machine is six feet this really is the cable that knows that your machine is six feet and it knows that kind of information through this sensor right here so you this sensor and this film go hand in hand so this sensor now has a cable connection i don't know if you can see that cable connection from here let me show you 
I don't know if you can see that cable connection there, that cable right there. That's the cable there. And that cable goes in there and comes out all the way right here, right? So that is your sensor cable. And so if you don't put this cable there, your machine will just be jiggling around on the x-axis and it will not know exactly where to go. So if you notice that your machine is just the print, the carriage boy just going like this, 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 going like this without knowing where to uh, stop this is the cable that is most most likely at fault so you need to put that into consideration and that cable like i said goes into the sensor right here uh let me get some lights down there so that's 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 the sensor and that's the cable and where it comes out and then lastly we have the main cable and so this main cable uh, serves two purposes uh, the first thing you observe about this board is that there's really nowhere to connect the power. So the power actually comes from the driver board. The power goes into this slot, right? And then it feeds both power and data through this slot, which is the other side of this cable. So ideally now you will pass a cable from this place and then you pass it onto this place, which is this particular cable right now. So if I remove this cable now, this board will not power up again. So if you notice that your board doesn't power up at all, this is the first culprit. Because if your board does not power up at all, this cable is the issue per se. So don't even bother looking at all. If there's no power coming from here, it's not this cable. This is the printer head cable. This cable doesn't have to be there for this board to work. I have a video on that subject. It's not this cable. This is just a sensor cable neither is it this cable this is just a network cable so when it comes to the main power that comes to your machine it is here and you can see how many capacitors are laced around that cable just to you know ease power flow so once uh something like 42 volts comes into this place the capacitors and the resistors there that step down the amount of power that goes into this board so that your machine can then run and then your machine will not get burnt so technically that is all about the board I also would like to point out that this is the XP600 chip. That is the thing that does the calculation for the XP600 chip. This is it. And then this has something to do with network. If you look closely, you will find that it is NXD that produces. And NXD are companies that mostly produce uh, chipsets for networking and some other functionalities of the board. So, uh, well, this is the MOSFET, like the giant MOSFET. That controls both heating and so many other things like and that's why it's attached to a heat sink right here uh there are so many other ports right here we have j6 j5 and all of that but as you see in my board most of them are not used so which means that you don't need all of these ports working before your machine can work your machine is coded to be able to work with some other accessories so let's say for instance you have some new accessories that are important you can then use some of these ports to be able to connect it. I have a data sheet uh, of this board schematic uh, that is attached to this video. You can watch this video frequently so that you can see those schematics and then you'll be able to tell, okay, this is what this port does and all of that. There's so many other things to cover and we may not be able to cover it in this video, but this is like a general overview of your XP600 carriage board mine says carrier uh, sy2av2 yours might be a v3 for instance this one is a v2 while the driver board is a v3 right so now one other thing you have to pay attention to this carriage board is a yd board yd it's not written there but you see i bought it directly from the manufacturer so i know this is a yd board and this particular model of machine uses a YD carriage board. Now, but this one, however, is not a YD board. You can see from the last two numbers right here, this is a DY board. So when you want to buy a carriage board from us, for instance, and we say what version of board you are using, this is what we mean. If you check some other machines, these two boards, these two letters can be LC, it can be DY, it can be YD, it can be TS, it can be whatever it is now this yd dy board and this yd board they may look similar but 
they don't always all share the same component so there's a data sheet for this particular board as you will see on your screen right now there's a data sheet for this board and that data sheet may vary from this board by a slight degree so that's usually why once in a while if you put a driver a carriage board in a machine some functions may get lost that is because of this particular board so let's say you want to buy a board from china and you don't know what your board kind of board your machine uses this code is what you will snap and send to your chinese supplier and then the chinese supplier will then give you the board that's specific to that particular configuration of course chinese people tend to lie a bit so even if you give them this they may not send you that but at least you know where to look if they did not send you you could even have a kc board here now there's one last thing i have to bring to your attention so if your machine says a dy here but they now brought a new board to you and it says a kc here the one of the first challenges you're going to have is with your a tools because there's a different a tools for dy there's a different a tools for kc and there's a different uh, uh, a tools for yd so all of these tiny little codes here matter a lot right so you have to keep that also in mind that when you are trying to buy board from china this is something you need to look out for especially uh if you want to buy the board that works directly with your machine so you can insist with your supplier or insist with me that this is the particular board that you want so always cross check whether this what type of board you use and then use that to be able to guide yourself in what you want to buy or in what you want to know i hope this has helped you if it has i want you to hit the subscribe button hit the like button please share our videos uh share with your friends so that they can know some of these tiny tips most people don't know some of these things and that's why they run into trouble uh times your machine is fine all you just need to do is change the cable i have a customer in Syria alone who almost bought this entire board only for him to buy the cable from me and discover it was just the cable that was that was faulty and once he changed the cable he was fine so you don't always have to change this board if you know what to look i hope this video is one of those places that show you what to look when it comes to your carriage board all right guys i uh, hope this has helped uh, i'll see you in the next video bye take care